Okay, so you're working in Final Cut Pro and you have a couple of clips on the timeline and you want to add a transition. And so you click here and either you drag a transition or you hit Command T to activate the default transition and you get the dreaded error message. There is not enough extra media beyond clip edges to create the transition. Do you want to overlap your media? And a lot of people don't know what to do. They don't know why they get this message. And from looking around online, there's not a lot of information as to why this happens. One video I came across on YouTube by Ray Brown was posted in 2014, and it's a profanity-laced video in which he complains about Final Cut and this very issue. And you can see that uh, he says even in 2020, he's still getting hits on the video and people are dealing with this. And you look through the comments and people are saying, well, why hasn't Apple fixed this problem? What's wrong with them? Uh, well, it turns out it's not actually a problem. It's expected behavior. And if you understand how transitions work, you can understand why you get this message. So in this video, I'm going to break down how transitions work, why you get this message, and how to deal with it when you see it. So you can see here, I actually went ahead and added the transition. And the key thing to remember here, this transition is a uh, cross dissolve in Final Cut Pro, also known as a dissolve. Um, but this is really true for any transition that you use. When I go through this transition, uh, at least in the cross dissolve, the, the first clip fades out simultaneously with the other clip fading in. And so what that means is that during this transition, as you can see here, both clips, both images are on the screen at the same time simultaneously you're actually seeing both and that's the origin of this of this message that you get and you need to understand this in order to understand how to deal with it let's look at it another way so here i have two clips a blue clip and an orange clip uh, and they're both five seconds long and i've laid them out in my timeline so obviously that means that i have 10 seconds of footage here and they're just one after another well, if I'm going to do a dissolve or, or really any transition that involves both clips being on the screen at the same time, that means that there has to be a certain overlap, right? Because right now, the way it is, they're not going to be able to be on the screen at the same time because the blue clip ends and the orange one comes in. So what we really need is a situation like this, where there's a little bit of an overlap between the two clips, and that's where the transition happens. Uh, now, notice I just slid the orange uh, clip here to the left so that the fifth second of the blue clip overlaps with the first second of the orange clip. And in doing so, I've shortened the total length of the clip down to nine seconds. So this is now nine seconds. But as a result of doing that overlap, now I have a nine second clip in which in that final second of the blue clip and the first second of the orange clip, we have the fade out of blue, fade in of orange, and an overlap in which both images are on the screen at the same time. All right, here I am in Final Cut Pro, and uh, you can see that I have a blue clip and an orange clip. And uh, on the blue clip, I have a counter in the upper left, and the orange, I have a counter in the lower right so that you can see what's going on. And I'm just gonna drag the blue clip to the timeline. And now I'll add the orange clip right after it. And uh, we'll just play it and you can see that it goes one, two, three, four, five on the blue clip. And then it cuts immediately to the orange and does one, two, three, four, five. Uh, and you'll notice that when it stops, we're exactly at 10 seconds on the timeline. Uh, that's because obviously we have two five second clips back to back. Now, if I try to add a transition here using Command T, that's the default transition, the cross dissolve, uh, you'll notice that I get that dreaded error message and I'm just gonna say create transition. And when I do that, watch the timeline because you'll see that it actually shortens by about two seconds. Now in my graphic, I was showing a one second transition, but in this case, the default is a two second transition. So you notice we drop by almost exactly two seconds. Um, but if I go to the beginning and I play this, this uh, video, what you'll see is that the dissolve happens exactly the way I would expect it to. Uh, there's really nothing wrong here. It's exactly what I would want. Uh, if I go back to that dissolve, you can see that uh, as, as the orange clip fades in on number one, we have number four on the blue, and then the blue goes to five and the orange goes to two. 
and then it fades out and we continue counting on the orange. So th this is exactly what I would expect and want uh, when I combine these two clips together with a dissolve. So actually, uh, it, it's not even that bad of a thing that we got that. It did shorten this, but, um, but it shortened it because of that overlap, which was necessary. Uh, now, some videos I've seen actually say that uh, both clips get shortened uh, when this happens, but that's not actually true. Nothing was really shortened. They were overlapped. And in Final Cut Pro, we can see that if we double click right here on the edit point, and it will actually expand and it will show you how it just bumped that orange clip to the left a little bit so that it overlapped with the blue and you can see in the gray area the fading out of the blue clip and the fading in of the orange. Uh, so nothing's really wrong here. It just did exactly what we expected. Uh, now I'm going to go uh, undo that transition. First of all, I'll hit escape to get out of there and I'm just going to remove that transition. Um, and I'm going to go through a couple of so-called solutions that I've seen to this problem uh, on YouTube and in other places. So one person said to create a compound clip of these two. So we'll go ahead and do that. And uh, I'll just leave it at the default name. And then to make uh, a cut right in between. And then uh, go ahead and click there and add the transition. Uh, and so it certainly didn't give me that error message. Uh, interestingly enough, my clip length or my, uh, my video length did not change. It's still at 10 seconds. Let's just go ahead and play it and see what happens. Um, yeah, it didn't seem to do anything. So that didn't work for me. Maybe there's something else to that that, uh, that I missed, but it didn't really work. Uh, so I'll go undo that compound clip for now. Uh, so actually another suggestion was uh, rather than adding the transition after both clips are on the timeline, uh, let me just delete that completely, uh, that you should add it first before you add the second clip. So here I have the first clip, I'm going to add the transition and something pops up there. Uh, and now I'm going to go bring my orange clip down. And uh, well, I didn't get an error message, that's for sure. But if you look at it, this ends at eight seconds. So Obviously, what happened was uh, it's doing exactly the same thing as when I got the error message and just proceeded anyways. So all this really did was get rid of the error message, but the end result is exactly the same as the first time I did it. So it doesn't really solve any problem. Uh, it's just doing the same thing. So I'm sure you're probably wondering why this error message crops up with some clips and not with other clips. And there's a very good reason for it. So let me do this. I'm just going to delete uh, this stuff off of the timeline. Uh, and you'll know that when you, uh, when you bring in a clip into your media pool up here, before you add it to the timeline, you actually select an in and an out point for that clip. And right now, I'm just bringing in the whole thing as indicated by the yellow box. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the blue clip, which is the first clip uh, on my timeline, and I'm just going to shorten the end by about a second. So I'll just bring it down to about four seconds long. Uh, and then uh, I'm going to bring it down on the timeline. And then I'm going to take my orange clip here and I'm going to shorten the front of it by about a second about there, and I'll put that one on the timeline. And now you'll notice that uh, if I add the transition, I don't get the error message. And uh, the total length of this video is now about eight seconds again. Um, so what happened there? Well, once again, if we double click here, we can see what's going on. Uh, again, the clips are overlapping, um, but what ended up happening was that that part of the clip that was unused, that I did not select, uh, that, that came like for on the orange clip before the endpoint, that area is considered a media handle by Final Cut Pro. And so even though I added only the section of this orange clip, for example, that's in the box onto the timeline, uh, Final Cut Pro knows that it can use this unboxed extra se section here uh, as a media handle or as like an overlapping uh, point on that clip for transitions. And so when you do it that way, it doesn't actually complain. Now you may wonder how other editing software deals with this problem, and it's not a problem unique to Final Cut Pro. Uh, any editing software is going to have to deal with this if you're doing transitions that involve both video clips being on the screen simultaneously. Um, I don't have Adobe Premiere or another editing uh, program except for Camtasia, and I can tell you how Camtasia deals with it. 
The way Camtasia deals with it is it actually takes the end of the first clip and the beginning of, of the second clip and it, it just kind of freeze frames it there uh, so that it creates a little bit of an extension to each clip. And that enables them to, to keep the entire video length the same. Um, but the downside to it is that if you've ever done a transition Camtasia between two clips, you'll notice this freeze frame. There's just, just a second when uh, you're going from one clip to the next that the first clip kind of freezes and then the second one coming in is, is frozen. So it really doesn't look that good. And uh, at the end of the day, I prefer Final Cut Pro's solution. So now that you know how this happens and why it happens, uh, what are the ways to deal with it? Uh, well, the first is just don't worry, it's fine. Uh, as you saw with my blue and orange clips, once I accepted the error message and clicked the button uh, to create the transition, uh, the resulting effect was exactly what I wanted. I mean, the dissolve was perfect. It was just what I would expect. And it didn't really matter to me that it shortened the overall video length by two seconds because uh, I still saw both videos and I had a nice clean transition. Uh, another option is if you control your footage, if you're filming it yourself, you can always leave extra space on either end of the clip. Uh, so you can film for a little bit longer in the beginning and the end. I think most people do this anyways, and that gives Final Cut Pro a little bit of extra space to work with to overlap clips when you're transitioning them. Uh, now, sometimes these aren't an option. Uh, a good example is I do some video podcasts, and if I want to edit those and possibly create a transition uh, between different uh, clips in the video podcast, I really can't leave extra space because it's just me talking to somebody. And so uh, that's not really an option. Uh, in that case, what I could do is to use another kind of a transition. Uh, either leave it at a hard cut, uh, or the other option is some kind of transition that doesn't require both clips to be on the screen at the same time. Uh, and an example of that would be maybe fading one clip to black and the other one up from black. Uh, so that doesn't actually require any change in the length of time of the final video. And if you do it quickly, it's a pretty nice transition and uh, it's not jarring like a cut would be. So those are a few options. Uh, I hope that this video cleared up what was, at least for me, a very confusing issue. I had to do a lot of research to figure this one out. And uh, hopefully uh, now some of the YouTubers who were leaving comments on Ray's video can uh, relax now that they know why this happened. So thanks a lot for listening. Hope this helped you so long.